Can't stress enough, you're gonna lose a little and it's gonna be tough. Hit the ground running with your super stuff. All right, all right, all right. It's like synchronized swimming, but with straw. Thank you. We don't know how much it is, but we need it. So, I'm gonna nick your ratchet straps, are we? I am so sorry to anybody that gets stuck behind me on the A66 at school run time on a Monday morning. I am so sorry. I apologise. If it was up to me, I would leave the mellow here and pick it up later. But no, we've got to take it now. Now the second. Loaded the straw, I look really rough. Emily's on the way from Farmer's Guardian and I need to fix Wynn's kennel. All before eight o'clock. <laughs> so just a tiny little bit on electricity. Somebody the other day commented about how we were going to get electricity from where the three phases in here, across here. Now, I know I try and explain everything as best as possible um, but this was done a long time ago so if you'll excuse me I'll have to run through it when we got the three phase put in in preparation for the shed obviously because we knew we'd need three phase for robots it was put in here so it's in here so these massive big things here are things like circuit boards we have something called a turnover switch which is, I presume, this one here, which costs a fortune, so that if the electric ever goes off, these guys can carry on running because we've got a PTO powered generator sat here waiting to get put in. And there's gonna be a hole through the wall here and all you'll do is pull a tractor up to the other side of this wall, stick the PTO in, turn it on, Bob's your uncle, your robots are still running. But yeah, kind of gutted that I didn't get any more of the three phase going in because there was 17, 17 trucks Electricity Northwest trucks here on the farm, moving electricity poles, um, pulling ones out, moving them to other places. They had to um, basically narrow down the, narrow down, lessen the space between the poles because the equipment on top was slightly heavier. But back to the point, at the time we ran an, a, a red electricity ducting, which is a must it's like a legal requirement i think um let me check on that but i'm pretty sure that you kind of have to do this it's not a choice and you have to put it on is it like a bed of sand then your electricity duct and then sand again and then above it you have to put a uh like a tape there isn't any knocking around there was for quite a while like a tape that says electricity yellow tape you know like what they um cord and car crashes off with that stuff you put that over the top of it so if a digger driver ever goes in before he touches your electricity he pings the tape obviously sees that it's yellow stops work and you avoid crashing into electricity which is very dangerous and here's the end of it 
poking out there in a big puddle of water. And stuck out of the end of it is a drawstring, this blue string here. Can you see that's trailing about? So that basically means when they put the cable in, they can tie the cable to the string and pull it all the way through. It makes it really easy. So yeah, that was preparation. I like, I know that I can't show you the preparation that's already been done and it makes it a little bit hard work. But yeah, this is a must. This is done properly. It's not done farmer spec. So this here is electricity duct. It's bright red. It's solid. It's basically like a big red drain pipe, but a lot more expensive. It, it says, caution, electric cable. And that is how the electric is run across the yard, over there in the shed, underneath all of this, and out here. So, in answer to the guy's question, yes, it was done properly, and no, it wasn't done farmer spec. So, look at what has just come. Tags. Tags. Now, I know, I know it's a bit previous, but by doing things like this now and being organised and having everything ready, it means that when the time comes, it's one less thing to worry about and everything runs that little bit more smoothly. So Roy has just informed me that the red ducting actually runs all the way into the fields, up to all the poles, because that just is how it has to be. And also he wanted the pot, he wanted the electricity cable under the ground, not in the air. So that's why it runs through the poles on the floor. But incidentally, our cubicles, the brisket boards are literally made out of the electricity duct. How crazy is that? Um, it is literally, it's just identical, but it doesn't say electricity on it. And I bet it was a damn sight cheaper. And then I have also just been reliably informed that somewhere in here is the yellow cable. And there you go. Next to an old scratchy bag of wool. Caution, electricity northwest, cable below. So that should any unsuspecting digger driver um, go to dig above the cable, it will hit that before it hits the red stuff. Thank you to Alan Deaton for coming last night and fetching us a spare spike because Roy bent his. We can now use the long spiky spiker. It's looking all right. I'm not being funny, it does that freak anybody else out? Like that whole bucket is being held on by that tiny, tiny little pin. Or does it just freak out health and safety executive here? So I've just asked Roy if I can tell you how much three face costs and he said yes in the, for the purpose of educating other people about how much these things are not like look at us look at what we've got do you know what i mean because that's like as far away from what i want to be as possible so it cost about 40 grand to put it in and at the time roy's dad was like why are you doing that why are you doing that now and roy said because it'll only get dearer and i would not like to think what it will cost to put it in now all these years later honestly i wouldn't like to think and yes we've had three phase for how many years now 2018 to now and we haven't used it so it's like you know full potential we've literally just run the house and the farm off it but nothing special Roy said it has given him great delight over the years when we've had people to do with robots slurry separators whatever it might be have come and said you know with their little checklist oh but you won't have three phase and we've been able to say yeah actually we do because we like to plan ahead and um, but yeah that's how much it cost it was extremely extortionate let's be honest um I think safety wise, that's why they had so many people here. It isn't an ordinary kind of job. I've so Roy, I should just say himself, um, said we were very, very lucky that you can't see uh, that roof there. That's our neighbor's farm now. But years and years ago, there was a fellow called Tom Carrick who lived there and he was a very, very forward thinking farmer. He was completely ahead of his time. And 
weirdly now we're all about ventilation but back then all of his um bull sheds were all uh, heated <laughs> um you can actually see the things on the roof where the oh, it's crazy honestly it's crazy they're all insulated and heated anyway he had three phase back then so that is why it was only brought from can you see that pole there that was it to are you ready there 40 grand yeah, I said that. I said that. There was an extra pole put in, but I've already said that. Um, just to make room for the extra weight of the lines. Well, I would like to tell everyone that Tom Carrick was so ahead of his game, he drove a Rolls Royce. I bet he looks stupid going down a farm lane like that. In a Rolls Royce, though, let's be honest. And you drive a Banger Pole ML. He's not paying attention to me. He's not listening. You know we've made it when the Rolls Royce comes. So I'm just having a wander around the yard looking for any more bits of timber because saw bench is coming off very shortly. That's actually a really useful bit that holds the gate back when we're mucking out and reversing the Keenan. So that's an integral piece of the farm. I can't be moving that. There is a big, I think. That's actually heavier than what you thought. Okay. Heavier than what I thought. I'm committed now though, I can't go backwards. It'll, it'll show I'm weak. I wonder how far this spike goes up here. Should we find out? It wants to go on the scrap metal heap now and not on someone's tire. A double ended screw. So, look at me, I look so tiny behind this giant steering wheel. Um, just gonna chop the last, just gonna chop the last of the beat. It is there in the bouquet. So the bunker is at the back. This has come in really handy. We've had, to be fair, a load of rubbish, sand, logs, pole crop, and now feet, all in small quantities, but it's been a really, really handy space. So overall, we've been really impressed with the weight gain with regards to feeding feet to the animals. We've done it for, I think, three years in a row, not two years, three years in a row. Um, yeah, three years in a row. We first got onto it because we were running out of silage and we were using it just to supplement the feed and bolster it up a little bit, to be perfectly honest, but we quite liked the results. At the time, we didn't realise we were feeding it to suckler cows because obviously um, that's what we had at the time and we didn't realise it, it binds iodine and we're fairly iodine deficient here on the farm. So that was something to just bear in mind if you're going to be using it as a substitute feed. Um, we are more feeding it as part of a balanced diet now with a lot of grass silage, a bit of straw, that kind of thing. A couple of bales thrown in. These guys that we're fattening now are all dairy stock, so they're not milking. They're not going to be under any threat from anything like that. But yeah, they fatten really, really well on it and we're really impressed. Just laughing about these girders. Can you see them? They were the garage. Like, they were, they were the garage. And Roy was adamant that he was going to be using them. They went, uh, I'll put a picture of it in, they went across the garage doors, which is just absolutely insane. Um, it was such an expanse. So we chopped them in half and they led in a pile for an awful long time, but Ro was adamant that he was going to be using them. So when we came to doing this little bunker, he decided that was the steel he was using. We didn't save any money because let me show you how thick the concrete is that we had to shutter um, because of the size of the girders. But the concrete has to, is literally as thick as you can see there. It is colossal. This wall is huge. So yeah, no money whatsoever was saved. But Roy's happy because he is the ultimate recycler. So I'm just letting the boys out for a little drink. What? 
What do you want from me? What do you all want from me? Or maybe just go and get them some hay. I'm just having a little bit of a, just have a bit of a punch about a minute. I don't think this gadget realizes we're not actually, we've never been best friends and I've always been terrified of him. Okay, so just putting that out there. So, tidying up is really on the way. Nearly done, just need to move that Bowser. So I'm just rehearsing. 140 horsepower tractor to move what seemingly is a very light piece of uh, metal. <laughs> Can you stay there though? Are you He says, really light. <laughs> dead light, they are dead light. So, these have been over there for quite some time. Okay, they have been living here. Like, look at the ground, and we're just trying to get tidied up. Uh, we have an idea for them. We want to make a, well, we did want to make a step alongside a race system so that it would be easy for us just to step up and get above the cows. But then we realized the jerseys are this big anyway. So do we need a step? I haven't got a clue. Um, what do you think? I, I don't know. That was just one idea for them that Roy, I'll put it over. He'd seen something and thought it was a really great idea. I mean, what a difference a day makes! Well, two days, let's be honest. We've been doing it for two days. So we have tidied up. We now have a clear run. Look at that. So Roy's cleaning the scrap up and then we are very, very nearly done to going for something to eat. The only thing we have left in the yard, you might be wondering why it's there, is a big pile of sand. So this here is to um, pad the ducts in for the communications cables. So let me show you. That's not padding it in, bedding it in. Bedding it in. Where's that cable gone? I've lost it. I've lost I've lost it. I haven't lost it. It's in here. So this here is for the communications cable. It's funny how all these little things pop up, um, but you don't realise to start with that you're going to need them. So the communication system cannot run within a metre of the electrical system. So the ducts that have the electric in cannot carry the communications cables because the pulsing in the electric interferes with these. So it now has its own duct. Thank God we hadn't concreted because we didn't know about this. It's just been a latter addition. And this here comes with the thread already through it. Absolutely. Genius, absolute genius. Here's a question for all you health and safety executives that love to comment on my videos. A hit and hope post hammer, come on. Is it even legal to use one of them bad boys anymore? That's just been dragged out the nettles and I say that quite literally. Roy's taking it down the yard. We don't use it. We haven't used it for an awful lot of years. We ended up buying um, the Browns post hammer. I actually don't know where it is somewhere down the yard I don't know but yeah we haven't used it for years and years a lot of people still use them a lot of people how how is that still legal it is so dangerous it is untrue the amount of limbs that have nearly been lost when we've been using that post hammer it's unbelievable but yeah we're gonna throw it down the yard I'm actually gonna just have a scrap up leave that pile of sand there all of this needs to be gone it can't go into the midden because there's that many stones in it 
it has to literally just be dozed into a pile and it'll just have to be buried when we're doing some of the, you know, some of the groundwork. That is so much better, so much better. Yes. A clue until Roy told me he'd watched all his video and he'd said about somebody getting penalty points for traveling down the road with spikes on. So we'll be shoving the spikes in the back of there and taking them separately. I did not know that, but it makes perfect sense though. Like if you've got a grab, the grab kind of covers the spike, doesn't it? So if a car did bang into it, it's not gonna pierce it. Whereas them, to be fair, they are pretty lethal. I don't know why we would ever think that it was all right to do that. It's funny when you do a channel like this, you have to demonstrate best practice. Like there are things that we do wrong that we don't know that we're doing wrong. For instance, the harness in the man basket, that was a thing, a thing, wasn't it? Um, but you don't, you don't go out of your way to show crappy practices that you do on the farm. We all do things wrong, like, per, like let's be perfectly honest. Um, but you know when you're putting yourself in front of people that you should generally do the right thing. And just best practice around your livestock, showing yourself in the best light. I think it's, I don't know, it's a really peculiar position to put yourself in showing your farm online and you generally do have to be very considerate that you are representing an industry not just yourself and when you do do things wrong like I know we do things wrong um you know the the whisk doesn't have a PTO cover on but in my defense if you go near the back of that whisk when it's running you're gonna fall down a giant hole full of slurry so it's kind of pretty obvious that you wouldn't be doing that but in the interest of showing best practice, we now have a brand new PTO cover on the whisk, which I haven't shown yet because it's not whisked any slurry. But last time I put it on, that was commented on that I should be doing what's best. So I am therefore doing what's best. It's a really funny position to put yourself in. Do you feel better? I feel better. You did not miss a railway sleeper. No way. What? <gasps> you missed a railway sleeper. Disgraceful. I'll tell you another thing that I didn't want to do that I ended up doing just because people kept going on about it. And now I'm really grateful that I did it. Um, lambing with gloves on. Pathetic, I know. Uh, when I first started lambing sheep, which was what, three or four years ago, I'm fairly newbie to the game. Um, I got loads of comments, mostly on TikTok to be perfectly honest. Why are you not wearing gloves? Why are you not wearing gloves? And I was like, oh my God, you're such losers. I don't need to wear gloves. Like, I don't get the point. It's no different. Blah, blah, blah. I can't feel what I'm doing. The amount of, like, justifying I did to myself for the reason I didn't wear gloves. Anyway, three fast forward three years later, um, I gave myself iodine burns. Um, basically because I was hoying iodine around that much. I'm just laughing at some sheep gallivanting in the sun. It's really funny. Them three at the back have been really... They're being really silly. They're not running for any reason whatsoever. They're just being silly. Anywho, fast forward three years later and I gave myself iodine burns because I was just splashing the stuff around. Didn't realise I'd made my skin really sore to the point that I couldn't bear my fingers. It was absolutely ridiculous. So I started wearing gloves. Oh my God. I wish I'd worn gloves sooner. I really do. There is absolutely zero reason why I didn't. I can feel everything that I could feel without them. Like it was just, you know, and it's just one of them things that you know you should have done. But because people were telling me that I should do, I didn't want to. It's just a really funny thing putting yourself out there and then realising that you have to justify your own actions. So like no children on machinery. It's illegal. You can't do that. I can't even have my two. Anna's 11. I can't have them on a tractor. Yes, I disagree with it but it's the law. I can't have them on a tractor. I can't have them on the quad bike. I can't have them on, I can't have them on anything. Bobcats, nothing. Merlo, nothing. Just can't do it. So yeah, I think you just have to just best practice and be very aware of yourself and the way that you are putting yourself across. It's just a really interesting, it's more of a podcast thing, isn't it? But yeah,
how them spikes started off that conversation, I'll never know. But yeah, he's taking the grab. He's not taking the spikes because you can get pen penalty points if you put spikes on the front of a loader and go on the road. I did not know that. Silly things like Roy wearing safety glasses. You know, it's one of those things that if you didn't do YouTube, you might possibly not do and just think you can get away with. Um, me wearing a mask when I go in and crush the barley. Like all of these things it makes you question the way that you're conducting yourself because a lot of other people are seeing it. And it's just for the better, definitely for the better, but you do very much double check yourself more often than not whether or not you should be doing something. So a little bit of an update re-Jersey cows. The deal in Surrey has fallen through despite us giving a 10 grand deposit and having shook on it. Um, it was actually now, it's a blessing. So we've actually found a herd a lot closer, um, robot trained again. Um, so fingers crossed for that one. But yeah, I think um, to coin one of Big Roy's phrases, the tail was starting to wag the dog, let's say. Um, it gives us a little bit more time to finish the shed, which is great. And it also means that the stock that we have that we were feeding up ready to sell, we don't have to rush it now and get rid of it prematurely. We can actually see it through and start to enjoy, well, enjoy them again, to be fair, because actually it was getting to the point where we were going to have to like sell these sooner than what we would have liked. So kind of like the goalposts were changing weekly and the stress that it was causing, putting pressure on us to finish a shed sooner than what we wanted to, which would have put also put pressure on the builders, but then it would have meant an inferior finish as well, which is not what we wanted at all, at all. And therefore for less money than we would have liked. But at this point in time, it means that we can actually keep um, all of the cows for as long as we want and sell them more out of choice than rather out of like a forced hand, if you know what I mean. So yeah, just a little update on the cows. Um, when I do hear anything and when there's anything set in stone, I will let you know. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate all of you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Love you long time and I'll see you next time.